in uh, Lewis. Are you prepared to say what they are now? Oh, yes. <laughs> he had so many weaknesses. It was things he haven't he, uh, he attempted to do that I, I saw, but uh, uh, hesitating and, you know, with the overhand right, he uh, telegraphed his overhand right, and I think that that was my main key to uh, stopping him. Um, I was trying to lure him, lure him into throwing the right hand. As soon as, soon, as, soon as I lured him into throwing the right hand, I just counted with a straight right hand, and we all know the quickest point to a, from line to line is a straight point. Who's been your inspiration? Who, who's inspired you the most, Jim? Who's inspired me the most? Well, I must say um, my family, my kids, Don King, who uh, really stood by me and helped me maintain myself and my discipline, not only in the ring, but definitely out the ring which uh, has really shocked not only the world, but my opponents also. Now they will look at me as a definitely ultimate force now. And I know you've admired Mike Tyson. I believe that you spoke to him before and after the fight last night. Yes, I did. Uh, we had some words, whatnot, some words of wisdom as far as um, what I should do on my performance and taking it to him. And uh, I went and I worked on that, matter of fact, with my left hook and whatnot. And, uh, most of all, most of the things I kind of done on my own. I just wanted to experiment with my boxing style. Everybody thought that I was just going to bore in like a bull and just, you know, just, just come straight forward. But uh, I was there to show the people that I, I am a great boxer and I can box as well as punch. Well, also joining us in the studio are uh, co-presenters Frank Warren and Don King. First of all, Don, I mean, what is the future now? Does Mike Tyson figure in the plans for the future? Most certainly. I think that Oliver's future is very bright. Uh, when Mike Tyson is released from custody, uh, we now know who he will fight. He'll be fighting a couple of guys getting a warm up, but he will be fighting Oliver for the WBC champion. So that has removed a lot and it's a very, very bright uh, future, Sue. And I just wonder where Marcus Planted is because he's the guy that we're looking for now. He has him a new heavyweight champion thanks to Frank Warren. And uh, we're going to go out there and build up England because I love England and I think it's just so wonderful. The people have been so hospitable, so gracious that we want the fans, and they're the best fans in the world, by the way. They have sent Mike Tyson more mail from England than any other country in the world, you know, including America. So it's, a, it's, really a, it's really great, you know what I mean? So we want to bring the best shows here to England, and so Oliver wants to come back and defend the crown. That means you'll be busy then, Frank. I hope so. He's a, he's a tremendous fighter, Oliver, and I thought what he did last night was, was, you know, was such a superb performance. And I think that's, it's, what Frank Maloney and, and Dan do with it at the moment is wrong. You know, Lennox Lewis was hurt. It, they were only 30 seconds into the second round. It could only have been worse for Lennox. You know, he was the guy taking the punches. And for them to you know, come out now saying that the fight shouldn't be allowed to go on is, is, is a very stupid and dangerous statement to make. But we have heard that Dan Dubis has issued a complaint. Well, then, again, it, I find that sad. You know, Dan wasn't in the ring taking the punches. The guy in the ring taking the punches was Lennox Lewis. Mm -hmm. And all that would have happened was he got even you know, more badly injured had that fight been allowed to go on. The referee, I believe, stopped it, as, stopped it dead right at the right time. And also, I think that's reflected in a lot of the newspapers this morning. You know, Barry McGuigan agreed with that. Mm -hmm. And I think a couple of the other journalists I spoke to. You know, Oliver done a superb job. Don't take it away from the guy. He came to the other man's backyard and he won the title, and he's going home with a belt. But he's going to come back here and defend it. So who will he fight in this country next? Well, we've been talking to uh, our, our friend at the moment, Mr. Duff, and uh, with, you know, I think Frank you know Bruno's means, on yeah. the agenda. <laughs> Good old Frank's on the agenda. You know, it'd be a great fight. Uh, but, you know, we've got some things to sort out. There's some obligations that we believe to us have got to be honoured by Mickey, and if he honours them, Frank, Frank Bruno will get a chance. But Don, I mean, we, we in this country obviously didn't know a lot about Oliver before, but he certainly made a name for himself now. He certainly did, and I predicted it, you know, just the way it came out, because I was confident he would beat Lewis. I see the weaknesses in Lewis all around. He has a very bad team, uh, not like they're bad people, but they are inept and incompetent. And if you notice Lewis's career, since he won the title, he went backwards instead of forward. And that's because he had these trainer Pepe uh, Correa uh, who would not help him to win but be more to self himself into the fighter rather than the fighter himself and and uh, it's sad to say about Frank Malone this is another stupid decision that he's making in making a protest and accusing the WBC who gave him a title he never won a title in the ring the WBC awarded it because of Riddick Bowe trashing that same belt in the trash can the WBC awarded it to uh, 
to Lennox Lewis. And then Lewis, Lennox, Frank Maloney stops attacking the, the, you know, the one that's giving him the belt. Mm -hmm. And I think this is just small-mindedness on his part, and he really shouldn't do that. But it's sour grapes and it's jealousy, but we're back. We're in there now. Mm -hmm. And the thing he should have been doing was trying to ingratiate himself to get a return match and get his guy back, get a win, and come back and fight again. Instead, he wants to burn the bridges of every way he's gone. But Lewis has had a lot of criticism from the American experts, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And, and justifiably so, I might mind you. Because he doesn't, I think Lennox Lewis is one of the best fighters in the world. I think he has the talent. He's a gangling young man, six foot five or six, thunder in both hands, you know what I mean? But uh, he's not being brought, around, uh, brought along properly. And then the mental and psychological aspect of the fight game, which is 80% of it, is getting the man mentally focused and disciplined and ready and psyched up to go out there and do what he has to do. Oliver was a, was a magnificent example of that. And we knew we had beat him all the way down the line, so we just went right on down the line with, with Lennox, and we could tell that Lennox was beat because his team was in disarray, you know, and uh, they got fighting within fighting inside, and Maloney really just gave his fighter to Duva, and Duva's a packager. He's really not a promoter. He makes business out of fight rather than the sport, then makes business out of the sport. And so what they find themselves in now is they really have lost the heavyweight champion, going to lose the other one in, a, in about a 90 days to me. And so, but I want to be with the people, Subak. I just love it. I think it's so fabulous, and I'm just so excited about being on your show. <laughs> and you're so beautiful. This is what makes things happen. So I'm just excited. Me and Oliver are coming back to England. <laughs> well, you can come back any time after a comment like that. Yeah. I must ask you, is there any possibility of a rematch uh, coming up soon? Uh, slim and none, and Slim's out of town. Uh, so, so we will be talking, though. We, rather, we would much prefer to fight Bruno because he's a gentleman. And if Mickey Duff keeps his word, which is it's quite difficult for him at times, but if he keeps his word, we will be able to deal with uh, Mickey Duff and Jarvis Astaire and uh, try to put that together for the English people. But I want to prove to the world that the English fans are the best fans, and they will pay if you give them a show with true value for their entertainment dollar. You can't run a scam on them and think they're going to come up and give up their quid. The first law of a promoter is to try to sell his show, but to have something that the show will fulfill his prophecy. Maloney got on the, on the telly and says, this is nothing, it's a garbage fight, Oliver's a sparring partner, he's nothing, is out, out on the street at night, and he can't, he don't beat at a fight, we'll knock him out. Well, then, then yeah, on the other hand, he say, see what you paid 250 pounds uh, for a seat, why are you going to give away your quid if you know the fight and the guy done told you he's promoting this, it ain't no good, then you got to be kind of, you know, stupid to go buy and spend your money with a guy saying it ain't no good, that's promoting it. I mean, it's, it, you don't do that type of thing, you know what I mean? And this is what he did, so he didn't have no people in the house. You know, they said 8,000, but you can cut four of them off, you know what I mean? You know, so, but the thing is, if it, we only came if it was one, Sue. I didn't care with nobody there but the judges. I came with a mission. I came to London to win the title. So I told him I'm a Yankee Doodle dandy, I'm a Yankee Doodle boy. I have a, I'm a real live nephew of my Uncle Sam, born on the 4th of July. I have a Yankee Doodle fighter, and he's my Yankee Doodle joy. Oliver McCall came to London to knock out Lennox Lewis, and that's my Yankee Doodle boy. <laughs> what do you say to that, Oliver? <laughs>